Which would you choose? A cookie cutter game that's mechanically perfect or one that's unique but flawed in execution? Get Even is incredibly inventive in many ways, but often struggles to fully realize all of its ideas. So, do the positives outweigh the negatives? Let's find out. I'm Adam Scott, and this is Get Even. You already know why I'm thinking about this. Because you've had the same thoughts. Get Even is a first-person psychological thriller developed by The Farm 51 and published by Bandai Namco for PC, PS4, and Xbox One in 2017. Fun fact, its original release date was pushed out by a month following the Manchester Arena bombing. Actually, that's not fun. Not fun at all. I'm so sorry. Get Even is an astoundingly ambitious game, but with enough flaws to make this a very love it or hate it experience clearly aiming to push gaming forward as a storytelling medium. We cold open outside of an abandoned building with very little information. You play as investigator Cole Black, and all you know is you need to save a girl trapped inside. Determined, you go in, fight past the guards to discover she's tied to a chair with a bomb strapped to her chest. And like most of your life, you fail. The bomb goes off and the girl dies. Next thing you know, you wake up in an abandoned asylum with a device strapped to your head. Uh, not exactly. The device, known as Pandora, allows you to explore memories. It's sort of like that movie Source Code. No, Source Code, you know, with Jake Gyllenhaal, where he tries to change events from the past. Uh, well, well, it's like that, <laughs> son of a... There's a mysterious figure named Red who's pulling the strings from behind monitors. He says you're responsible for the girl's death and directs you to investigate the circumstances surrounding her kidnapping, both in the current time and through the memories you go into. And this sets the stage for Get Even. The narrative comes out swinging, pulling you in with its interesting premise, multifaceted characters and layered mystery that unfolds unexpectedly throughout. You'll feel compelled to piece together the details that led to the tragedy you've witnessed and whether you can change it. Who the fuck am I? And why the fuck am I armed? I understand your curiosity, but there will be time for questions later, Mr. Black. You'll wander through the dilapidated halls of the asylum, exploring its grimy nooks and crannies for clues. Some will trigger memories that will let you experience the events from the past. Regardless of the scenery, you'll find yourself in the familiar loop of exploration, puzzle solving, and combat, or avoiding combat. At times, it feels like a straight up horror game as you skulk in the dimly lit hallways, sounds echo in the distance, and you anticipate something jumping out of the shadows. The game's at its best when you're simply immersed in the atmosphere, exploring, soaking in the creepy environments, learning more about the world and the characters from the masterful world building and environmental storytelling. On the other hand, there's the rest of the gameplay. Combat is more or less what you'd expect from a basic FPS, with a small arsenal of weapons like pistols, shotguns, and assault rifles, but it never feels great. The standout is the corner gun, allowing you to, wait for it, shoot around corners. So yes, you can remain comfortably behind cover while still blasting fools in the face. It's an interesting idea for sure, but there's a problem. By having pinpoint accuracy while remaining in cover, where's the tension? Where's the danger? What makes for exciting combat is the danger and having to use your tools and skills to overcome it. Now, if enemies flanked you, pressuring you out of cover, that would be a good counterbalance. But enemies aren't exactly what you'd call a... Uh, Smart. Mostly, they'll hang back and pop you from a distance, assuming they're even aware of you. At times, you'll walk right in front of them without them noticing you, and then others, they seem to have x-ray vision, pretty much spotting you through walls. So, you could go stealthy or guns blazing, but since stealth doesn't have a non-lethal option, and the unpredictable AI makes stealth unpredictable, you'll really be choosing between engaging in combat or avoiding it altogether. While you have the choice, you're ultimately discouraged from satisfying your bloodlust anyway, with the explanation that killing people threatens the stability of the memory and could cause it to break down completely. 
Depending on whether you heed this warning will affect the ending. You'll make other choices throughout that have consequences too. Like whether to release an inmate from a cell or whether to solve a puzzle or find a way to bypass it. You won't always know what the consequences of these actions are until later, but Red will comment about the choice you made. What did you do, Mr. Black? Understand, your actions here will have consequences. You must take responsibility for them. When you're not shooting people and sneaking around in the memories, you'll be investigating and solving puzzles. A big component of this game is searching for evidence and clues to help you remember your past. Your phone has a handful of helpful apps, like a scanner for analyzing objects for evidence, a map for navigating the environments and even tracking enemy locations, thermal vision, a UV light, and messenger for communicating with other characters. The environments are littered with various notes, photographs, and audio recordings that you'll examine and store in a special evidence room that you can revisit between missions. Gathering this evidence isn't required for progression, but collecting all of a mission's evidence unlocks a code that opens special doors in each one. And trust me, it's worth it to find everything. It's easy to miss hidden pieces of evidence, but that'll mean missing out on a lot of the intriguing backstory. Now, most of the puzzles are easy enough. I tend to suck at puzzles and get frustrated if they're too tough or obscure, but I also want to feel clever when I figure one out. And that was rarely the case here. If anything, I found myself overthinking a lot, assuming the solution was a lot more complex. For the most part, you'll decipher codes to open doors or use levers and valves to open a passage. The quality of the voice acting is surprisingly great. You won't recognize any of the voices, none are big names, but each give it their all. It's genuinely impressive how well the strong acting adds to key scenes, really selling you on the unfolding drama. Your current confusion is a byproduct of your treatment. All very unfortunate, but I assure you, you are in safe hands. If it helps you focus, you may call me... Red. You, you gassed me. There was something before. Another place. That's why you're here, Mr. Black. But now is not the time for questions. That, coupled with excellent sound design bringing the environments to life, and the great soundtrack make for a wall-to-wall -wall excellent soundscape. Must be where they hold the art therapy classes. Therapy. In this place. Taking a noticeable step down in quality are the visuals, clearly showing budget constraints with blurry textures and that drab brown and gray color scheme looking like it's from the 360 era. While you hear great voice acting, you'll rarely see character faces, let alone see them talking. Faces are often only heard over the phone or covered up in some way, like these memory sequences where characters fade in and out. So technically, the visuals are rough, but I have to say from an artistic perspective, like many other aspects of the game, there are some real sparks of brilliance. The fragmented memories are a real standout, with images flickering in and out of existence, or the way enemies will fragment into a million particles when killed. Completing this game to 100% is pretty easy. However, since you need to see both endings, you'll need to plan ahead. So here's what I did. Play through the game without killing anyone, make the right choices, Trust me, you'll know which ones, and thoroughly scour the environments to collect all evidence. This will give you the good ending. Then go to the mission select and replay any to unlock the hidden memories and get anything you missed. Lastly, replay the black missions, kill absolutely everyone, and make all of the opposite or bad choices to get the other ending. All in, it'll take you about 15 hours to do everything. And I'd say it's just a few hours too long a bit tighter, and the rough patches would be easier to overlook. Get Even sort of feels like five or six games were glued together, leaving the overall experience feeling schizophrenic. Now I did have a lot of fun, but it never reaches the heights of brilliance promised at times. The impeccable storytelling and interesting gameplay concepts are offset by poor execution and mundane encounters. If this were a movie, it'd probably be fantastic. You know, like Source Code. And while I enjoyed my time, your mileage will vary. But what's undeniable is Get Even is unlike anything else. He just needs an objective.
All right, there's Get Even. If you liked the video, hit like and of course subscribe. And if you want another game that you haven't played, check out my video right here. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.